Okay, so in this video we're going to be talking about some of the applications of residue theorem uh, and the calculus of residues to actually solving real integrals. So, so the first integral that we're going to consider is the following. Let's have the following integral, 0 to 2 pi of a function that has a trigonometric function in it. So that's 5 minus 3 sine theta squared. And obviously, seeing this integral, we, we can tell that using conventional methods wouldn't actually work. A and this is a fairly complicated integral, but hopefully by uh, understanding the, the method of using turning this into a complex function and then using the residue theorem to evaluate it, you'll see that uh, complex analysis can actually have a, a very important role in, in real analysis as well, and just in calculus in general. So the first thing we're going to do when we have a, a function of a trigonometric function like this, what we're going to do is we're going to establish a complex variable uh, in the form of e, e to the power of i times theta. So that's just the, the Euler, the polar form of that set. And we're just going to assume that it has a, a magnitude of 1. So we're just going to set this complex variable. That is going to be one of the main um, one of the main objects that we're going to be using in our transformation. And then this means that we're going to have the element this set equals to i times e to the i theta times d theta. And we can make a substitution here. We can say that this is going to be equal to i z d theta. And this way, this allows us to write d theta equals to d z over i z. And, the, and this is one of the main substitutions that we're going to make. Whenever we have some function of a trigonometric function or some function of theta, we can make this kind of substitution in it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we have a sine theta involved in this particular function. So what we're going to do is we're going to use one of the identities we already learned, which was um, sine theta is equal to e to the power of i theta minus e to the minus i theta over 2i. And what we're going to do is we're going to replace all those exponential functions by z. So this is going to be equal to 1 over 2i, z minus 1 over z. So that's basically going to be what we get from that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to replace all of those things back into the equation. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to basically take the limits and we're going to consider... Um, we're going to consider a circle of radius 1 on the complex plane. So we're going to draw our complex plane. We're going to take a curve defined as magnitude of z is going to be equal to 1. So that's a, a unit circle centered at the origin because basically we have the 2 pi. Um, we have 0 to 2 pi. That's basically the boundaries of integration here. So we're going to assume that this is going to be a closed curve and now we're going to do this, we're going to replace all these uh, variables here by z. So first thing we do is we're going to replace this z here. And then in the denominator, we're going to write 5 minus 3 over 2i times z minus 3 over 2i over z. And all of this squared. So this is going to be the expression we're going to get from that. Now, with a, with a little um, manipulation, we can arrive at the following function. So I'm just going to skip a few steps here because this is a fairly long derivation and solving it will take some time. So just to, just to spare you the details, I'm just going to basically make a, a simple algebraic substitution. I'm going to take the 2i out and then I'm going to multiply both um, numerator and denominator by z to get rid of that z in the denominator there. So we're going to get the following expression. This is going to be z dz over 3z squared minus 10iz minus 3 and all of that squared. And then we can make a further substitution by basically dividing everything in here by 3. And that means that we need to divide this by 9 because we're taking the 3 out of that squared expression. So this is going to be 4i over 9 of the contour integral of z over dz and this is going to become z squared minus 10 i z over 3 minus 1 squared so this is going to be now the integral we evaluate so in order to use the residue theorem what we need to do is we need to find the poles in this denominator 
So what we need to do is we need to use the quadratic formula. So we're going to use the quadratic formula to actually find the values. Because we know that because this is square, anything that is zero here is just gonna be zero in the denominator. So that's what it's going to give us the poles and the singularities. So what we're going to do is we're gonna set this equation equal to zero. minus one equals to zero. And now we use the quadratic formula to find the roots of this equation. So that's going to be 10 over i, so 10 i over three, sorry. Square root of minus 100 over an i, because remember when we square the i, that becomes minus one, minus four times minus one. And this is going to be over two. And this is going to give us 10 i over six, plus or minus half of square root of minus 64 over 9 which is going to become equal to 10i over 6 plus or minus 8i over 6 which means that our set values are going to be the following so we're going to have two roots we're going to have 3i and i over 3 once we calculate those values so having found these two roots, what we're going to do is we're going to test whether they actually lie within the unit circle because remember that our curve is a unit circle. So we have imaginary axis, real axis. So first thing you notice is that this is going to be 0.3i, so that's going to actually lie outside the circle. And by the residue theorem, we know that this the residue of this point, so of f of z at 3i, should be equal to 0 because it lies outside the curve. And now i over 3, that's going to be somewhere around here, so we know that that's going to be inside. So basically, the only thing we need to calculate is the residue for this, and that's going to give us the final answer that we need. So we're going to now proceed to find the residue of that point. So I'm going to have to clear the screen here a little bit, because this is going to take a little bit of calculations. So let's just clear all of this. So now we proceed. So now, and on the final thing that I forgot to mention is that, of course, we need to express our function of set in terms of the new, um, in terms of the new roots that we found. So this is going to be set minus i over three squared times set minus three i squared. So this is going to be the function in our integral, which has the form four i over nine times the contour integral of this set sorry, it should be fz, dz. So this is basically what we have so far. Now we're gonna find the residue of this root. So this is going to be f of z, i over three. So what's the first thing we notice? That's a, that's a pole of order two. So this means that we're gonna have one over two minus one factorial, so that's just going to be 1 times the limit as z approaches i over 3 of the first derivative of the following function. So we're going to have z minus i3 squared, because that's order 2, the pole is order 2, times the function itself, so that's going to be z over this, z minus i over 3 squared times z minus 3i squared and these two elements are going to cancel out. And then we're gonna differentiate this. So this is going to become, this is going to become the following. Limit as z approaches i over three of one over z minus three i squared minus two z over z minus three i cubed and then this is going to be equal to minus 45 over 256. And then finally, for our integral, we're going to have is the following. We're going to have 4i over 9 of the contour integral of this function f of z, dz. And by the residue theorem, we know that this is going to be 4i over 9 times 2 pi i times the sum of residues and in this case, the only residue we have is that one that occurs at this pole, which it has this value. So in the end, once we plug all those values in, we should get, we should be able to get the following value. So four pi over 32. So that's going to be the value of the integral 
the original integral that we defined as the real integral from 0 to 2 pi of d theta of 5 minus 3 sine theta squared. So that's basically our answer. So we just evaluated a seemingly impossible real integral by using the residue theorem, which is one a, a theorem that applies to functions of a complex variable. So that's a really interesting application that we just looked at. And in general, for, for any uh, complex, for any real integral that involves a definite integral that has limits from 0 to 2 pi, and that involves some function of theta like this, basically what we do is we take a curve uh, that is based on a unit circle and then we apply the residue theorem by, by changing these variables into expressions of set using the substitution we showed and in the next video we're going to be looking at another application that is going to look at how to solve definite integrals that involve polynomial functions